hi everybody, this is Roxy, and I bought the We Are Memory Keepers bookbinding punch set, and I love it. I've had some fun with it. Um, it's super easy. Uh, this side is for making a design on your um, cover, and then this is to bind the cover and the book pages all together. So I, for myself, um, just kind of colored in the center. So when I do make a uh, decorative stitch, I know where the, the center is going to be and how far in I have to come depending on um, the size of the book. So what you get is this. And this comes off, you know, after you punch your decorative stitch area. Then you flip this over, put the, um, the pages and the cover under here flip it over, screw back in, and then you can punch your holes. So, I'll kind of show you. Um, so you get that, get a little booklet on kind of how to. I love Me We Are Memory Keepers products, but they don't have the best or most thorough directions. And um, as you know with the tassel, the little tassel thing, they, their instructions on that are, are not correct at all, and they couldn't even figure it out. So anyways, you know, they're kind of, like this is how to do a, I think it's, that's a Coptic stitch, it looks like, yeah, Coptic stitch, but I think there's better, I did a, um, I did a video on Coptic stitch, plus I added a, a stitch to it so that you can find different size cards. I was doing Christmas cards, making them into a book. Um, and then, of course, C Lemon has awesome tutorials. And then here's um, a few designs that they have, which are kind of, again, that looks more like, yeah, Japanese bound. So that's going to be your decoration on your cover, but it also binds your book. So that's what they're kind of focused on. But anyway, so you get that, you get that. You get um, two big needles, this circular one and a straight one. And then you get a little pokey tool and some embroidery floss and my paper clips. I use those to clip the pages together. So I haven't used this floss. It's um, it's a little waxy, but I would suggest getting a wax. They're usually circular, and then you run your thread through the, there's like a, a V, and then there's wax inside. But I would definitely get a wax, a waxer for your thread. So anywho, here I'll first show you my books that I did. I only did a few. Here's a snowflake kind of stitch and the problem with it is you do see the stitching inside but if you do it exactly the same which I didn't do because I probably got distracted it'll look okay but otherwise you can always cover that so these are just some little and of course once you get it over on this side and poke your holes then you can sew it up uh, the pages in but it's just a nice decorative look. This, um, I made my own patterns in. And these are like mountains. Like a mountain range. As far as I'm concerned. These are Christmas trees. Or trees, evergreen trees. And then I did this one to make it look like um, tents. Like camping tents. So, and then again inside... That I really got distracted because it should probably be looking look like this. Again, you can just cover it up. That's not too bad. That's almost perfect. Until I got. But it's I think it's fine. I don't care. So those are them. Those are those. Um, okay, so here's what you do. I've already got an idea for another book. But I'm not going to do a fancy stitch. I think I'm just going to leave it. Oh, I should show you this too. 
here's my patterns. I made, um, here's my original. I made this on my silhouette. I just um, drew like about, um, and I'm sorry, I drew these circles out on a piece of paper, scanned it into my silhouette, and then copied it all the way over, and then I just made a bunch of, um, you know, I did the rows just like this. So it's a big one, small one, big one, small one, just like that so you can determine which, where your pattern's going. So then I just copied them off. So there's three rows, so that's what I did. So then, I can make more patterns out of those, but here's my patterns. So these, and this is the center. So these are the mountains. <coughs> that's this one. I thought I could do more, but I forgot when I was doing this. I kind of thought I better just do the two mountains and then next time I'm going to do the the middle mountain so it'll look more like a mountain mountain um, scenery. This one is the tent. So there's how you did that. This one is the evergreen trees. And then on this, this extra, the, like the trunk, goes to you do that stitch while you're stitching the binding because you don't have the binding stitches until you get this done. You know what I mean? So you want to do this first and then you want to poke all your holes in your um, your book. You know? Then you would do this last stitch. So what I did is I'd stitch here and then go inside there and come back stitch here, go inside, here, and go back, out, and then stitch all the way along. So you can get the, the trunk of the tree. And then here's my Nordic Winter, which I thought it'd be fun to do, um, not all the same. You know, I could have done all the same, but I just did a couple in lower, like that. And then you would not use that because that's too long. So that's my patterns. I can't remember if I did. Yeah, I do. I thought I'd have some um, hearts. And then I've got Scandinavian um, sewing. So I made some, I think it's called Higa. 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 It's either Higa or Higa. So I did some of those patterns. I made some of those cross stitch border just a kind of fancy little cross stitch but I wanted to do a heart with the Higa um, they have certain shapes and stitches in Higa it's H-Y-G-G-E um, so go check that out that's kind of really cool Scandinavian looking pattern so and if anybody wants if you got this or you want to get this um, if you want my pattern, I can certainly send you a PDF of that if you're interested. So here we go. I will quick show you. Like I said, I'm not going to do a pattern on this because I want to decorate the book more um, by itself. Oh, and another thing. I think it was this one. This one. You can also make folders like a pocket just by cutting your um, book page longer but but I made the pocket separate and then just glued it on because I didn't want it to um, you know it would interfere with it'd be tricky so you can do it either way I did it the easier way alright so you just want to get your Pages lined up. And like I said, we're just going to do um, no pattern, no stitching, just binding. Yeah. Okay, so we want to find the middle, get them nice and lined up evenly. And that's pretty good.
I just lost one of these. It rolled off my table. It must have been loose on here. And it rolled off and I thought, what is that? I couldn't find it. Thank goodness I moved my cutter on the floor and there it was. Because I would have been SOL. So you want to start with the first one. And just go, you know, like this. You don't have to do every single hole because that would be a heck of a lot of stitching. So I'm going to do every other because that will be binding enough. Every other big hole that is. And if you want me to do, if you want me to show some stitching, I can do that too. Just comment below. All right, so. There's your stitching. Super duper easy. And then this, I was going to point out, it's kind of bent there. So it fits right in there. And then it fits right over there. Pretty, I mean, they're kind of our genius that we are memory keepers. They must have some crack designers on their team. All right, so that's all that's needed for that. I think this had a cover. I don't know where it is. So then, where is, so oh there. I'm going to round the corners. Because I do like the rounded corners on them. I don't know why, but I do. I like the big rounded corners. I gotta get a big utility cutter because I think that's the hardest part is to cut the dumb pages. Because all I have is an exacto. And I think it works better when you have a big utility cutter. For evening up the pages. Why is it doing that? There. There. No hair allowed. So, <clears throat> maybe I'll do some of their white string or embroidery floss. These are my first patterns. And that's my trying to figure it out. Yeah, it was a little tricky. So this is waxed, which you do want that. It just is a little less hassle because it won't get, you know, twirled up and stuck and start knotting up. That should be enough. And I'm going to start in the middle. How did I do? Yeah, I just tied it off. I'm just going to start on the end. On the top, maybe, and come down. And then tie it off in the middle, maybe.
I mean, the needle's thicker than the pokey tool. And then I do like to go back up so that it's a solid line because it's just um, nicer looking and it's more secure. And I'll just tie it off up here. Okay, so I just tied it off at the top and then just tied it all together. So then there's only one little knot. And I just got a bone fold it. And I'll be decorating this in the next video. So thanks for watching. I really like how this works. I'm new at it, so you know I'm still kind of figuring things out. But like I said, if you want um, one of my empty patterns, just let me know. My email's down below, and I will put a link to this binding tool. Um, I got mine on Amazon, and I think I had um, points or a gift card or something, so I got a free, which was nice. But I think that's only like 15 bucks, maybe 19, something around there. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.